Here in this story, we have the longest conversation Jesus has with anyone in John's Gospel. Now, Jesus often has extended monologues himself, but now we have this lively give and take between Jesus and a Samaritan woman. The story has unfortunately been the object of centuries of overactive imaginations that have guided interpretations. And those interpretations, characterizing her as an immoral woman with a shady past are everywhere. You may have even heard sermons offering a racy image of the woman at the well. I'd suggest to you that those interpretations reveal more about the interpreter than the gospel text itself. But that's for another sermon. I do want you to note that she isn't given a name. Important people tend to get names in stories. It becomes a part of their identity. Names clue us in as listeners or readers to pay attention to a character. They're important. This woman's nameless. She's not defined by a name, but rather by her ethnicity. She's a Samaritan woman. Yes, she's a woman. Now, if we were first century readers of the gospel, we might have picked up on a traditional trope here. Jesus is sitting beside a well. Jesus, a man, is sitting alone beside a well with no way to draw water. And that's the start of many an ancient romance story. Boy meets girl beside a well. Love is in the air. And it's Jacob's well here, too. So cue old familiar stories. When Jacob meets Rachel. Or Isaac finds Rebekah. Or Moses encounters Zipporah. All of those happen around wells, just to name a few. But instead of a budding romance, in John's Gospel, we find a deep theological discussion, one which moves from surface questions to a more personal level and then on to spiritual longings. This woman holds her ground against a stranger she finds at the well. She starts right away. Why would Jesus, a Jew, speak to her after all and ask her for a drink? He should know better. Jesus responds with a multi-layered answer, as he often does in John's Gospel. He doesn't spell out who he is for her. Rather, he creates a moment of invitation and exploration. If you knew the gift of God and who I am, you would ask me for living water, he says. And then he waits for her to respond. She does keeping her feet solidly in her Samaritan identity, her mind quickly moving from practicalities, you don't even have a bucket, sir, onto more provocative questions of identity and tradition. This is Jacob's well, a source of life, hope, and identity for generations. And you think you've got more to offer me than this? Jesus, for his part, stays in the conversation, too. He doesn't dismiss what she says or discount the significance of her community's faith. He just counters. He counters with another meaning-heavy statement. And by this point in the gospel story, we the readers know that nothing is ever what it seems to be on the surface. Yes, there's water. There's talk of fresh, cold, clear water drawn from Jacob's well. But there's also living water, water flowing from the beginning of creation, when the spirit was moving over the face of the deep, water that renews the fullness of humanity, not just bodily thirst, but our deep desire for wholeness. Jesus says, those who drink of the water I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman leans into the conversation now because this is more than small talk at a public well. This encounter will change her life forever. As their talk continues, the woman's understanding grows because Jesus reveals himself to her as trustworthy and knowledgeable. He meets her questions with respect, never dumbing things down. Instead, each response of Jesus's pushes her to reflect on what she's known and what he is bringing into the world. Finally, near the end of the conversation, she's almost there as she says to him, I know 
that Messiah is coming and he will proclaim all things to us. She's this close. And then Jesus offers this explosive word of self-revelation. I am he, the one who is speaking to you.